Hey, what's up guys? How you doing? Uh, so, where do I start? Uh, yesterday was pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. But before I get to that, I want to say that life happens to everybody, right? And I mean, I just feel like, damn. The weirdest things tend to happen to me at times. Just out of the blue, out of the... I, I scratch my head sometimes. I say, did I do something in a past life? I mean... But it is what it is, you know? I keep pressing forward. It is what it is, right? Stuff happens to everybody. But I decided that, hey, you know what? It, it dawned on me. I tend to laugh about these things that happen, you know? Because that's all you can do. I mean, it's either that or you let it drive you nuts, right? So I, I just choose to deal with it and laugh about it and just say, hey, it, it's just, this is comical. This is stuff that, a lot of stuff, you just can't make it up. Most recently, yesterday, for instance, uh, in the morning, was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. No, it was the day before, I'm sorry. The day before you, um, Late afternoon, uh, right before my son's graduation, we have like an hour and 30 minutes to kill. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, hour, 40 minutes, whatever it is. Let me, let me play a DJ set, right? Maybe 35 minutes, 40 minutes, you know, keep everything warm, whatever. I just made my year June 1st of DJing. Uh, something that I wanted to do for a very long time, extremely long time. And I didn't get around to doing it because, you know, life, right? Now, I have some more time on my hands, situations different, and stuff like that. So I'm able to, to do it. So I've been into it for a little over a year now. June 1st, I made my year. Um, I love it. I love music. I was raised on music, all types of music. I'm going off course and I tend to do that, so bear with me. Going back now to what happened the day before yesterday. I power on the laptop. It powers up, boots up like normal. I have a Lenovo idea pad, i5, right? Has the i5 processor. I bought that particular one because the i5 processor goes well with Serato. We want to go with something that, you know, if Serato has stems, so anybody that's into that uh, DJ stuff knows that Serato stems. Serato in itself is very demanding, but now try adding stems to it, it becomes that more demanding. So you need at least an i5 chip or better if you're not going with a MacBook Pro. As everybody knows, and I've done my homework too because I was kind of skeptical about Apple. Uh, are they really that good? You know, what's the hype and all that stuff? And I really, really looked into it. And MacBooks are very impressive. The fact that they come with Final Cut Pro alone is, in and of itself, something to want to make you buy a MacBook Pro because that piece of software alone is like four to five hundred dollars by itself. But anyway, that's neither here or there. The point I'm trying to make is that I go and I, I power the thing on. It's been working. I had it about a year and a half maybe, right? It's been working fine, flawlessly, handling stems, everything. Apparently there was some sort of update that happened overnight, um, the previous night. And I boot it up, boots up like normal. A little pop-up window on the bottom right-hand corner comes up and says, an update was applied. Um, restart your computer so that the update can take effect or whatever, whatever is said. Me in my haste, right? I wasn't thinking, right? I was in a rush. I wanted to get it done. I wanted to get practicing. I had 30, 35 minutes to kill. Let me knock a set out real quick. We had an hour and 40 minutes or some change or whatever it was. 
So I say, ah, should I start the set and ignore this thing and maybe, you know, down the line I'll, I'll restart it on my own someday? Or should I just restart it now and get it over with? So I decided, hey, let me restart it now and get it over with. What happens? Oh, it restarts, right? Things starts loading and like this is loading updates, whatever, applying updates or whatever set. Then something else followed afterwards when that bar came across and loaded up <coughs> saying something about BitLocker, right? So I see it strobing across. So now at this point, I'm kind of like, hmm, what is that BitLocker? What the hell is that? Um, it kind of said, you know, I kind of thought to myself, should I just power this shit off? Because I don't know what the fuck is BitLocker and excuse my language, but I don't know what the fuck this, this BitLocker crap is. But I see the bar loading up, whatever, and I'm like, hmm, well, maybe if I power it down, it might do more harm than good. Right? Because that's how some of these updates are. When it's loading, they tell you not to power it off. Anyway, I decide, let it run its course. So it ran its course. And when it ran its course, and it completed, I was now locked out of my computer because now it was asking me for the BitLocker passcode, which is a 48-digit passcode. It's a key code. It's 48 digits long. Now, apparently at some point when I was setting up the laptop when I first got it, and I didn't, mind you, I didn't set it up all the way through it, like I was kind of like rushing, right? So that's on me, and I have to accept that, and I have to bite that bullet, right? I set up some of it, right? The initial little steps, but there was some other stuff that needed to be whatever. Maybe that's the result of this, I don't know, right? Well, anyway... I go to my Microsoft account because that's where it's referring me to, right? It says your BitLocker code should be there. Put in the 48 key code and you're good to go. All right. I go into my Microsoft. There's no key code to be found. No record of it, nothing. I use my wife's email. I said maybe I registered it under my wife's name. I don't think I did. I don't see why I would. But let's just check anyway. Nope, same thing. Okay, well, what the hell's going on? All right, well, now I start doing some more research. And it's basically telling me if I don't have the thing, the, the code, right, the 48-digit code, that even if I try to call Microsoft, they're not going to be able to give it to me because it's a unique code that applies itself through Windows. It's a Windows feature that apparently is designed to protect your computer from anybody trying to, you know, I guess, access it remotely. And maybe if they make too many attempts, then the BitLocker kind of kicks in. And the next time you boot up or whatever it is, it encrypts all this, the C drive, basically. It encrypts the C drive. And the only way to unlock that is to put in the code. But if you don't have the code, you're fucked. That's the whole thing. So, guess what? Vaseline it is for me because I'm fucked. All right. And it's just, I'm like, I searched the internet. This thing just kept taking me in a loop. I mean, everybody's saying the same thing. And then you got these so-called people that make it look so easy. Oh, you just do it this way, that way. And then they unlock it, right? Or whatever. Bullshit. Bullshit. They had the key code, all right? Anyway, they had the key code, and and, and, and they, they did some other steps and stuff like that. Like, it wasn't working for me. I tried it. Trust me. I did all these prompt things, the command prompt the nonsense. I did all that stuff. Trust me, it did not work. One person was able to retrieve his key key code from the prompt thing. I don't know if it's a Lenovo thing, but my laptop wasn't allowing me to do that. It had like no recollection of this doing, uh, being there in the first place. Like it didn't even exist basically. So now fast forward, I tried to troubleshoot and troubleshoot and troubleshoot and I'm doing all this research and videos and this and that 
Google out the ass. And then I say, you know what? Rather than make matters worse, at least I know, thank God, it wasn't a virus like, you know, like a, a cyber attack on my laptop or some sort of um, ransomware or something like that, you know, right? Because then th at that point, you might as well just chuck the laptop and cut your losses and buy something brand new. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going with another Lenovo. I'm not going with an HP. I'm not going with anything else. Other than a MacBook, I'm telling you right now, it's either going to be the MacBook that has the M1 chip or the MacBook that has the M2 chip. I would prefer the latest one because that's how I am. I'm a tech nerd. So I like my tech and I like to get my stuff brand new, not really secondhand. Unless I'm desperate, maybe I'll get something secondhand that looks new. But I'm very picky. Anyway. The Lenovo, it's not the Lenovo laptop's fault. It's just one of those things that I should have looked at that situation a little bit better and in my haste and I'm, I'm making this video because it's laughable right and this is going to be the first of many series because trust me I have a lot of stories that I can tell you that stuff that happens to me day to day or every other day or once a week or twice a week or something it's just entertaining it's just pure entertainment at this point i'm like you know i can't help but just be amused by the stuff as it pops up life right but anyway and i think if you ask me i think the lockdowns made people a little bit more nutty because the stuff that i see going on especially on the road unbelievable don't get me started that's gonna be that's gonna be for another one but Going back to this laptop situation, I just said, well, I called up Lenovo. They were saying, well, you know, based on all the information that you gave us, it doesn't sound like any of the other remedies are going to work because it looks like you tried them all. Well, we could send you this USB that has, what it'll do is it'll wipe out your old operating system and then reinstall a brand new one. And it's 100% foolproof. And I said, oh, okay. But then I'm like, in my head, I'm like, okay, well, how much is this gonna run me? But the fact of the matter is, is this sounds too good to be true. You have a one fix solution, guaranteed, right? How much is it gonna run me? That's the question, because I know that that's coming up next. They tell me, oh yeah, it's, um, it's gonna cost you about $129 for us to send you that USB. $129. Mind you, I didn't pay for this laptop up front. Laptop is like 600 and change. I got bills, I got responsibilities, stuff like that. I don't got $600 to just shell out like that. Okay? So, I did it through a firm. So, I'm still paying on the laptop. Right? I got another 400 and some change to pay. So, I'm almost there. I'm getting there, right? But whatever. Um, dude, <laughs> unbelievable. It's just some, um, I mean, and mind you, here's the funny part, the real funny part that made me laugh, even though this is a, a serious situation, right? Because if I don't have my laptop, I can't DJ on my main controller, which is the Mix On 4. All of that stuff goes together. I do have a backup, which is the standalone unit that I use, it's the Denim DJ prime go love it it's nice it's compact it runs on a battery it doesn't need a power supply until like four hours later you can do a whole four hour set on the damn thing as long as it's fully charged and you'll be good to go all right but anyway i'll leave a, a link in the description on that the review and all that stuff i think it's worth it i like it a lot and um but my main one is the mix on four and that one you have to have the laptop because that's how it goes. They go together. It's not a standalone. It's a DJ controller. It controls the DJ software, which happens to be Serato, which happens to run on the laptop. There you go. So now I'm like, all right. My warranty expired mid-February. So you know, my, my wheels start turning. 
and I say, how interesting, and I, I'm not blaming you per se as a female customer service rep. I'm not blaming you, miss, because you don't own the company. You just work for the company, okay? And, but I, I know that the call is monitored and recorded for quality purposes, right, supposedly. So I know that at some point, this is gonna wind up in some sort of, this conversation is gonna wind up in some sort of training scenario, whatever, right? Or maybe on an executive level, maybe they start reviewing things, right? Get, not trying to get ideas, maybe they brainstorm or whatever, right? Who knows? So I tell her, I'm not blaming you. You just work for the company. But I do need to express my discontent in this situation because how ironic that my warranty expired mid-February. I didn't renew the warranty. I didn't renew the warranty, right? But this happens. This happens. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, I get an update. All of a sudden, now I'm locked out of my account because of BitLocker, and all of a sudden, I can't find the BitLocker key, right? So I just find it very funny that all of this happened the way it did because she was trying to get me to renew the, the warranty. In fact, she asked me, why didn't you renew it? Okay. So now I'm in a dilemma because now she's telling me, oh, well, you got the USB option. That's 129. That'll cover you for 30 days because if anything happens after 30 days regarding that and you don't have the other warranty, that doesn't kick in. When you buy the warranty, it doesn't kick in until 30 days later. So in other words, what she's trying to tell me is you should spend almost $250 because one, the $129, they're going to send you a USB. That's going to be a 100% guaranteed fix. It's going to install a brand new operating system for you and the whole nine yards, right? And then when the 30 days warranty on that particular service expires, your new warranty that you had already purchased will be already kicking in. So it'll be right there. So when one ends, the other one begins immediately. And I'm like, well, that sounds nice and dandy, but I'm still paying on this laptop. And as soon as my warranty expires, a few months later, this happens. And now you're telling me that I got to pay $129 and you're encouraging me to do the warranty as well. And for me, I'm like, I'm saying, well, this is almost as bad as ransomware. It's not as bad as ransomware, trust me. I've looked at ransomware and I've studied ransomware and I'm like, wow, you, you literally have to chuck your laptop. I mean, unless you could take it to some pro that knows how to get the thing. But even then it's like almost impossible. You might as well just chuck the damn thing. But almost like it because in the sense I'm locked out and for me to get back in I got to pay a buck 29 okay and then I'm also being told to renew my my uh, warranty all right so now I'm like okay this sucks and I'm like well I'm gonna review my options because this is not good you know it is what it is I vented right I didn't curse, I didn't scream, I'm professional, you know, I'm not, it's not her fault, she just works for the company, she's letting me know, hey, this is what it is, this is what's going to happen, and this is what you have to pay. That's the company's policy, so I was venting about the company's policy, you know, anyway, I decided, you know what, Lenovo's not going to get any more of my money, screw them. I mean, it is what it is, right? And uh, I'm just going to take it to an outside source, an outside technician like a Geek Squad or something like that. In fact, she actually said, hey, there's nothing stopping you from taking it to an outside source. We're not trying to, like, 
I know about like tech, so I know that anything with a smart chip can be accessed remotely. People can use back doors to get into your stuff. Turn on mics and, and turn on this and that. That's a look it up, it's the Freedom of Information Act. It's all there. Look it up for yourselves. I'm not making this stuff up. But anyway, I don't want to even get into that because that's a long thing. I kind of brought that up a little bit and because with the whole warranty expiring and then to fast forward this, all of a sudden there's an update, right? And all of a sudden I have to restart my computer so that the update can finish and take effect and all this other stuff. And then magically I'm locked out. So of course my wheels are going to be turning, you know, especially since I'm still paying for this laptop. So she assured me that wasn't the case. And in my head, I'm saying, well, yeah, you work for the company and you're being recorded. Of course, you're not going to say that. OK, but there's a chance that that could have been happening. That way they could squeeze a little bit more money out of you. There's a lot of companies out here that, that do stuff like that. It's just like a mechanic that you go to, you know, well, you go for one incident. Then all of a sudden, three months later, two months later, something else happens magically and then the cycle just repeats itself but anyway i decided today to go to best buy i decided to drop it off at the geek squad i explained to them what's going on i had to shell out a hundred bucks but i get to pick up my laptop tomorrow and they had to uninstall they had to like wipe it clean uninstall the operating system put in a new operating system uh, you know windows or whatever right and that's what it is and i had to pay a hundred dollars so i didn't pay a buck 29 but i still paid a hundred it is what it is i need the laptop and i love playing on my mix on four and i love serato so it's a no-brainer that i have to do it i had to fill out a hundred big ones i just thought this is all comical and i just want to share it with you guys because i'm, I'm doing this new segment called laugh at my pain and it, it, you know, I'm hoping it takes off because I got a lot of material. I got a lot of material. And I'm like, I might as well. I might as well just laugh because what am I going to do? You know, getting upset is not going to solve anything. You know, and then when you solve one problem, another one arises. So it's just, this is life. You know what I'm saying? It's life. And I accept it for what it is. And a lot of stuff is funny. It's funny. You just gotta laugh at it. So I decided to come up with this segment called Laugh At My Pain, where maybe once a week or, you know, we'll see how it goes, I share my experiences of whatever I go through. You know, whether it's traffic, whether it's, a, don't get me started with traffic. The people that, I mean, how did they get their license? the stuff that I see solid lines right if there's two lanes or three lanes or whatever it is and they have solid lines it's a simple thing it's in the driver's manual a solid line means you stay in your lane I mean unless you know it's safe to exit if you're gonna go and you're gonna get off on an exit and it's safe to 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 kind of go and get off and, and, and veer off. That's different. But these people are just cutting you off, breaking through the solid line, racing past you, jumping in front. It's like the stuff is crazy that I see every day driving. I almost don't like to drive anymore. I almost don't. I almost don't enjoy it anymore. But anyway, whatever. That's going to be another segment. <clears throat> Because I got a lot of stories about driving. But um, I just wanted to share that with you. Thankfully, the good news is, is that they worked on it today. I paid them. Um, maybe three hours later, after I finished cutting the grass, because um, my son's, um, we're having a party for him tomorrow because he graduated. So we got some stuff here. A couple of his friends are coming over. I might DJ for them and stuff like that. So it, this this news that I got to pick up my laptop tomorrow, that's great news. Uh, 
And then, of course, I'll have to reinstall the Serato, but that's, that's nothing. I'll reinstall the Serato. I'll have to probably, I think I might have to create my um, smart crates again, but it is what it is. And uh, it's just a minor, minor bump in the road. It is what it is. So that's my uh, story in a nutshell. Sorry if I rambled on and veered off. I tend to do that sometimes when I'm trying to tell a story. And my wife gets on me about it. And sometimes she's like, okay, well, hello, get to the point. Like you're starting to, <laughs> you're starting to go into a whole different realm now. You started off here and now you're going over here. So um, if I don't catch myself, this is what happens. You know, so, um, yeah. Anyway, that's uh, this story I'm sharing, not only so that you can laugh about it, because I, I, trust me, I laughed about it. I, I, there's nothing else I can do. But it's also to teach people, um, any other DJs out there, especially, and what I did was a rookie move, a mistake. Okay, because I was rushing. Okay, and I can tell you that I learned from that. So now I'm going to be looking very closely when a little pop up comes up and says, Hey, you might want to restart because we just added an update. Eh, eh, nah, I didn't really read the whole thing. You know, a lot of us these days, right? We're pressed for time. We don't want to read too much, you know? We kind of glance at maybe the first few pages, uh, sentences, and okay the gist of it you know kind of power through it you know we should really start slowing down a little bit and kind of taking a better look at certain things that we're reading and you know before you sign off on anything or before you click a button or <clears throat> so anyway that's my uh, that was my uh, I guess my moment that I'm sharing with you guys it's it's also a learning experience anybody else um, that if you see like a pop-up just double check triple check don't rush and don't rush to restart that computer because you might end up in the same scenario as I, I, I am you may know a friend or relative or somebody that might know about this whole bit locker and it's basically a loop that I was caught in because no matter what I did it kept reverting me back to that bit locker screen asking me for that code no matter what I did so it was either cut my losses and try to sell the laptop off, right? Somebody will buy it and and solve the problem. Or uh, smash it into a million pieces out of anger, and I'm not going to do that. Or take it to a specialist that they're probably going to research, and they have the tools and the software and everything else. And lo and behold, boom. Now I get my laptop tomorrow. It cost me a hundred bucks, but it gave me peace of mind. And peace of mind is priceless. So, thank you for tuning in to this <laughs> first segment of Laugh at My Pain. I'm DJ Oracle, aka Rafael Ortiz. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the love and support. I appreciate you guys. And I'm hoping to bring way more content to you guys, okay? Just be patient with me. I'm new to this whole thing. I'm learning. As I, Trust me, I've come a long way in a year. As a DJ, I've come a long way. And I trust me, I know I got a long, long way to go. In fact, learning never stops. Everything is always evolving. So studying researching never stops it never stops so i'm only going to get better from here on end so i just thank you for the support i thank you for all the love i appreciate the comments i've been replying to your comments um i I've, i don't know how many comments i've gotten so far probably 55 or something like that i've replied to all 55 in some form or another it's even if it's just putting a heart or like or something like that but for the most part I would say a good 97% of the times I'm actually giving an actual response not just hitting the heart button or the like button or whatever um, so 
I am engaged with my audience. All right. Um, just keep it. Try to keep it clean and try to keep it. Um, try to be nice. You know, like I said, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Um, and it is what it is. We're learning as we go. Okay, trial and error. That's what this is. With anything in life, that's what it is, right? So, made a rookie mistake with the laptop, not doing it again. I learned from it. I don't have $100 here and there to be uh, hitting the best, <laughs> giving the best, get the Geek Squad guy. Oh, here's another 100 you know? No, I don't have that. I'm not, this is not that type of party, all right? But, I made the video so you could laugh, and I made the video so you could learn, and that's what it is. And that's what these segments are going to be about. Just laugh at my pain. DJ Oracle TV, thank you for the subscribe. Thank you for the like. Thank you for the share. Thank you for the love. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Good night.